My name is Howard Hu. I'm the chair of the Department of Population and Public Health Sciences, and I'm also a professor in the department. I trained as a physician, and I'm a physician epidemiologist. I look at how environmental pollution impacts on child development, as well as the risk of chronic disease in adults. The child development is mostly about how kids evolve their intelligence and their behavior. And the adult outcomes include things like cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, hypertension, cancer, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and other chronic diseases. So the kinds of pollution I look at are things like toxic metals, lead, arsenic, cadmium, organics like polychlorinated biphenyls and so-called perfluorinated alkyl substances. But for the most part, they're the invisible toxicants that are in our air, food, and water, but that collect in our bodies. I've had the privilege of also doing this research in different countries here in the U.S., but also a big study in Mexico that's been going on for 30 years, India, China, Taiwan, because this is where pollution affects millions of people all over the world. Some of the tools I bring are those related to being a physician. Uh, so I work on uh, developing instruments uh, that can measure, for instance, the amount of lead in your bones, because that turns out to be a great metric for understanding how much lead we've been exposed to for decades. I also work on developing uh, approaches to looking at genetic variants to identify susceptibility genes that make some people more vulnerable to environmental pollution. I've always been interested in social issues. Why is it that some people suffer more than others in anything, whether it comes to health, uh, poverty, etc.? But what's very clear is that environmental pollution is one of those social determinants of health. Uh, it can make people live less long, more poorly, have poorer intelligence, be more disabled. You know, when I was a student uh, in college, I happened to have a well-paying summer job as a torch burner in the shipyard. But unbeknownst to me, when I was ripping off asbestos from pipes and boilers, I was being exposed to dust that I inhaled that was a major risk factor for lung cancer, and also mesothelioma. It's a very rare form of cancer affecting the line of the lungs, for, which is invariably fatal. We still don't have good treatments for it. So when I learned that these were exposures that could have been prevented, and that there was knowledge about this in the 1930s, but that knowledge was suppressed by the company that made asbestos, I saw this really interesting intersection between social issues and public health that I became passionate about over time. So that's how I became uh, a physician with an orientation towards population and public health science and a special orientation to the environmental factors that increase the risk for disease. So there are several aspects of the work that I guess you could say is makes it so much a favorite part of my life. One of them is that this work is very transdisciplinary. I had to work with the physicists to develop this instrument that can measure lead and bone. I had to work with genetics experts to figure out what are the biological pathways that are involved in environmental pollution and its impact on disease. What are the enzymes that are involved in those biological pathways? And what are the genes that encode the genetic information to produce those enzymes? Uh, and that could be the genes that uh, confer susceptibility because of variants in the population. Another aspect that I find really compelling and fun on this is the ability for the science to inform policy. You know how in medicine, we're always talking about the scientific advances that allow us to improve the health of patients. Well, the dictum for population health science is we save lives a million at a time. And that's because our research informs 
policies that are passed on the federal, state, uh, local, sometimes even the global level, and that go forward to protect people in terms of the quality of the air they breathe, the food we eat, and the water that we drink. That's what makes these disciplines uh, so much fun and really compelling to work on. I love to teach. I love to engage with students and give a guest lecture, particularly on the things that I get to do as a researcher or things that relate to policy. I also have the opportunity to mentor students who come uh, to my research group. Uh, these are PhD students or master's students working on their practicum research project uh, and often postdoctoral fellows. And I have the great privilege of showing them around, uh, getting them really deeply infused into our research teams and understanding the issues uh, and grappling with the data and the data collection methods and learning how to publish this research. And what makes us so happy is watching them grow, thrive, become leaders, whether it's in academia like us, or industry, or government, or even non-governmental organizations, which are now beginning to hire uh, our graduates so that the missions that they have to advance certain particular issues in society can be science-based, evidence-based, and driven by the best knowledge that we can generate.